Marley Mulebar and this is Clean Devotionals, this series Perspective in the Dark, Day 4. You had it the whole time. So when things are taken away or it's, things aren't easily available, our minds can start to focus on the things um, that we don't have. Oh my gosh, we um, are quarantined so we can't go see our family and friends. We can't, you know, our kids can't go to school. We can't play the sports. We can't go to the concerts. You know, it's all the things that we can't, we can't, we can't. That's what our mind automatically goes to, right? Um, but God is, is, a, is a type of God that equips us for every situation. So even though our minds and our flesh want to, you know, say that we don't have X, Y, Z and focus on that, He has equipped us with everything we need for every situation in life. He truly has. We just have to shift our perspectives in the dark to be able to see it. So today's verse that I, that I want to focus on first is Exodus 14, 16. So that says, Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the waters so that the Israelites can go through the sea on the dry ground. So, here's a little um, scene and scenario for you. So, Moses is standing there on the edge of this cliff. He has <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Israelites behind him that he is leading, following him, and they've come all the way as far as they can go on land. And then there's this huge body of water in front of him. So it's just him, this staff that he's had that that God used to be able to, um, you know, when he talked to the Pharaoh, and he's, it's been his walking staff in the um, wilderness before he even got to Egypt. And then now it's been on this journey that they've been on to get to the Red Sea, from Egypt to the Red Sea. So he's always had this staff with him. But as of right now, when he's looking at that sea, it's, it would be easy for him to think, oh my gosh, look what I don't have. I don't have a boat. I don't have a net. I don't have, you know, food for these people. I don't have anything. And now we're here. We're, we're, we're trapped. We're, what are we going to do? Do these people know how to swim? We won't be able to make it. We have animals. We have children. What are we going to do? All they're looking for me for, they're looking to me for answers. And all I have is a staff. To our worldly eyes, this stick that he has been carrying the entire time looks like just a large piece of wood. But to God, it actually looks like a powerful, miracle-activating device, an instrument that God is going to use to, per to perform a miracle for, for these Israelites. So don't don't downgrade what God has, has equipped in your life. Some of the things that you've had the entire time, God doesn't see them in the same light that you do. He doesn't see them in the in the fleshly world. He sees them equipped with his power and that they're going to activate miracles if we use them with injunction with him and believe that those things can be done. Because the thing about God is we have to activate that faith and he will be with us and he will continue to be with us, but he needs us to have that belief in him that he, what he has given you is good enough at that moment. Because if you can't have contentment in your current circle, then it's hard for him to grow you into the next circle because you have to be content and be happy with him and with the, what, what you have going on and um, before he can grow you. And that doesn't mean that you can't aspire to have, you know, be better or aspire to have great things or aspire to do things in the future. Those are always all really good. But it's the negative attitudes that we have when we aren't content in our situation, when we're not relying on God. So it's really our attitude towards the season that we're in and the things that we do have in our season. Is God going to, are we happy and are we looking around excited for God to use them in our future? Or are we negative Nellies and just um, Debbie Downers not believing that God can use what he's equipped us with and what we've had this whole time? So what do you have in your own life that seems insignificant? Could it be the very thing that God is viewing as a powerful miracle activating instrument? What could it be? And we are called to be the body of God. You know, are we stretching out our hands? Are our words teaching bravery in this time of panic? Are our feet moving in faith? Are we examples to our children and to our spouses um, how to get on our knees and pray for healing instead of, um, you know, be drowning in depression and sadness and sorrow? How, what are we doing? What are we activating currently? Are we activating miracle instruments or are we, you know, going backwards in, in, in doubt and in despair? It, 
That's not what Moses did. Moses was there in a time and place where it would have been totally normal to read him going crazy and getting into the panic just like the Israelites were, but he chose not to. He chose to stand firm as a leader over his household. And moms, you are a strong leader in your house. You have so many eyes watching you as the example of how to be in a time of crisis. You know, I don't know if our children are going to experience something like this as adults, but if they do, they have you as the example to um, remember and to be encouraged by and to um, use as an example whenever they are older. The next verse that I want to look at that I think is very important is Exodus 14 21 and that states, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and all the night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into the dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry land. Moms, listen to me now. Sister, friend, listen to me. You can get through this. You can get through this sea or season um, with what you have now. God has equipped you with exactly what you need to get through this. No matter how no matter how inadequate you feel or incapable of doing the homeschooling or incapable of being with your kids or incapable um, of being in the healthcare and working and being in that demand, and no matter if you feel incapable of providing for your family because of job loss, whatever it is and that you're going through right now, you can get through it. You are equipped with everything you need. You just have to believe it. So today, sister, I want you to make a list. I want you to make a list of the top 10 things that you have currently. Do you have food that is provided? Do you have clothes on your back? Do you have a Bible in your home? Do you have access to sermons? Do you have access to praise and worship? We, me and my kids, something that we really like to do, we're called praise parties. So we just put on the boom box and we just blare it as loud as we can and just all kinds of praise music and we just dance. We move the coffee table and furniture in the living room and we just use it as a huge dance floor to party and jump and have a good time because praise and worship is warfare. So right now, God has equipped you with everything you need to fight the war that you're in over panic, anxiety, depression, um, addictions, chaos in the world. He has provided for you. You just have to start using it. So Moses, all he had was that stick that into our flesh eyes looks like nothing, but he activated it. He used his warfare and he held it up high and he stretched out his hand and he believed that God was going to see him through. And guess what he did? God came through and we and serve the same God that came through for Moses is going to come through for you. He is going to part the Red Sea, Red Sea of this season that you're in and give you the miracle. So today, I want to pray for you that God reveals to you exactly what things he has equipped you with that are that look to the naked eye or to the flesh as insignificant and unworthy or pointless to have, but God actually views them as powerful, miracle-activating instruments because that is what you can use in this time to stay strong and to keep your faith and your eyes focused on God in a in a you know a season of darkness because our perspective in the darkness is what's actually going to grow us and strengthen us and um, through this time. So let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I lift up each person watching this video. I pray that you would reveal to them exactly what you have in their lives right now that, that can be used um, as weapons in, in this warfare, this warfare over our minds, this warfare over our sanity, and this warfare over, you know, our our jobs and our country and our society. And um, you are fighting for us. We definitely believe that. And we just... We want to have the ability to um, use our faith and use the things that you've equipped us with now to stretch out our hands in, in reverent action so you can part the Red Sea to the miracle you have coming for us. We believe today, Lord, that you will deliver a miracle to us, and we believe that you will provide in a way that seems hopeless. When we are on the edge of the cliff and all we see is this red sea in this season, we know that you are bigger than that sea. No matter how um, rough the waves and the winds get, you are bolder and bigger, and in just that moment, that outstretched hand, you can have it part, and we will walk on dry land. So we pray for that miracle of walking on dry land and that parting of the sea in this season that we're in. Thank you for um, each and every person that is listening to this. We pray encouragement and strength over them and ask you all these things in Jesus' name. We love you. Amen.
Yes and amen. So. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope that you get encouragement from this, and I hope that um, you find today and um, throughout the next week things that God has equipped you with that you can use. And, you know, comment below. I'd love to hear the things that God has showed you in this season that you can actually use as warfare that looks like sticks, but they're actually a uh, miracle activating instruments. So if you are enjoying this uh, devotional series, I pray that you would um, hit the subscribe button and the bell and then share this with a friend because right now this is a tough time and I know that there are a lot of people who can be encouraged by this and who need um, this building of their faith. So I just pray that you would share it um, with a friend and family. And um, I encourage you to um, continue this series and other series uh, that we'll do in the future.